Here's an idea. Bronies are changing the definition of masculinity. Not sure what a brony is? Man, have we got a surprise for you. In late 2010, Hasbro rebooted their long hibernating pony franchise with a new TV show called My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. It was a huge success with children everywhere, but then something unexpected started happening. Men. Grown men started watching the show. These men, these male pony lovers, these bronies, have become something of a phenomenon, especially on the internet, where their community continues to grow and to be actually kind of awesome. So this raises an obvious question. Why on earth would a grown man want to watch a television show about magical talking ponies learning the importance of friendship? Turns out the answer is actually really simple. It's a great show. Bronies want to celebrate actually celebrate, not ironically celebrate, the show's themes, characters, and ideas as a community. And they do this using image macros, fan fiction, music, costumes, radio shows, and a huge amount of fan art. Like, huge, huge. But the fact that My Little Pony is a show for little girls provides some challenges for the brony community. A lot of people think bronies must be sexual deviants or morons, cretins of some kind, but they're not. As the brony study shows, they're mostly heterosexual dudes in their 20s who aren't in it for the hot pony action. They just happen to really love a show about the magical nature of friendship. So what's with all the hate? Especially surrounding a show whose main themes are love and tolerance. Well, by unironically enjoying what's only supposed to be for little girls, bronies are actually challenging what constitutes masculinity. Philosopher John Stuart Mill said that we tend to accept whatever is usual as natural, and bronies challenge the usual nature of masculinity masculine media consumption. Girls are supposed to watch TV shows with cute pink animals, and boys are supposed to watch shows where aliens and robots blow each other up. But says who? The notions of what's masculine, feminine, for adults or for children seem like they're permanent, but they're actually very fluid. Up until about the 1920s, pink was actually considered a more masculine color and better for little boys. Feminist philosopher Judith Butler argued that we develop ideas of masculinity and femininity based upon the performance of gender. Bronies are men who perform what is supposed to be a strictly female pastime, and that makes some people upset, or at the very least, <laughs> confused. This isn't anything new, though. There was a time when it was unheard of for a woman to wear a pair of pants, or for a man to stay at home and raise a child. But as more women started wearing pants instead of skirts, and more men became stay-at-home dads, as they started performing outside of their gender roles, these things became normal. Bronies are a group of dudes who say that it's okay to be a man who likes a show about ponies and unicorns and magic and friendship and that it has no effect on their gender self-identification. Anais Nin said that it is the function of art to renew our perceptions. As the brony community continues to grow through the magic of friendship and internet, they challenge our perceptions of what preferences are acceptable in men and what shows we should consider girly. This is all to say that if there are just as many men as there are girls who love My Little Pony, doesn't that make My Little Pony Friendship is Magic just as masculine as it is feminine? What do you guys think? Are bronies changing the definition of masculinity? Let us know in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed, you really should. There are a lot of perks. First of all, we owe a huge debt of gratitude to Michael from Vsauce. So, Michael, here's your internet high five. If you could please place your hand inside the outline. Ready? All right, internet high five. Second of all, we wanna welcome all of our new subscribers. Don't you guys worry, I have a lot of love to give. So, the hologram Tupac and new aesthetic conversation was lively. Let's see what you guys had to say. RickRock25 makes a fine point about the evil genius of record labels. Justin Bieber better start watching his back. Ionic George points out that hologram creation techniques date back as far as 1830. If there is one person who is probably upset at the sudden spike in subscribers, it's probably Sammy. You can do it, Sammy. We believe in you. Super Horrible Gaming wants to know how Idea Channel is made. Uh, I actually write the show with a small group of people who help me whittle it down. Jack Thomas wants to know if art can ever actually separate itself from the past. That's a really good question, because a clean separation is almost impossible. Well, Minto Bastet, you could just tell a hundred of your friends to smash the like button. Hamstiog thinks that holograms are extremely disrespectful, which kind of makes sense because the resurrected pop stars have no control over their work anymore. Fragma Crunch brings up a really good point about responsibility as it relates to the resurrecting of pop stars. Also, Fragma Crunch. 